Portuguese lawmakers have filed a legal claim that they would change the maritime boundaries of Portugal. It validated the exclusive jurisdiction of Lisbon would extend from its national coastline to the outer limit of its geographic continental shelf in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. The new territories would include vast areas of seabed and subsoil beyond the exclusive economic zone full of mineral riches. Today, the Portuguese Republic consists of three distinct territories. There is continental Portugal on the Iberian Peninsula and there are two autonomous Portuguese territories. The Madeira Island chain, which sits close to the Spanish Canary Islands, and the Azores archipelago, which sits deep inside the Atlantic, almost halfway between Europe and North America. Each of these three territorial units holds territorial waters, as well as exclusive economic zones. Everything within this belt of water is sovereign territory of Portugal, including the airspace above and the seabed below. Beyond territorial waters is the exclusive economic zone, which extends 370.4 kilometers beyond the coastal baseline of a state. An exclusive economic zone allows a country to claim exclusive rights regarding the exploration and use of marine resources. This includes fishing, mining, drilling, etc. According to the Convention on the Law of the Sea, a state can claim part of the continental shelf adjacent to its territory. For reference, the continental shelf is basically the geographic portion of a continent that is submerged under an area of relatively shallow water. The Law of the Sea limits the claimable part of the continental shelf to 648 kilometers beyond the coastal baseline. Within the extended continental shelf, a state has exclusive rights to the mineral resources and other non-living resources on the ocean floor. According to Solon, there were hundreds of enormous temples that sunk with Atlantis. As he wrote about just two of them, the temple dedicated to Cleato and Poseidon was surrounded by an enclosure of gold. There too was Poseidon's own temple, of a stadium in length and a half stadium in width, and of proportional height. That's 180 meters or 210 yards long by 90 meters or 105 yards wide and nearly just as tall. All outside the temple, they covered with silver and the pinnacles with gold. And in the interior of the temple, the entire roof was made of ivory, adorned everywhere with gold and silver. This building was three times the size of the Parthenon and completely covered in silver, ivory, and gold. Inside the temple, they placed statues of gold there was the god Poseidon himself standing in a chariot with six gold-winged horses and of such a size that he touched the hundred-meter roof of the building with his head and around him there were a hundred gold nereids riding on dolphins. All around the temple on the outside were placed statues of gold of all the ten kings and their wives. Hell, these people were even using gold tablets to write on. Now we understand why Portugal wants rights to other non-living resources on the ocean floor, right where Atlantis was. There are many people who suspect that the Rikat structure, known as the Eye of Africa in the Sahara Desert, is the lost city of Atlantis. It certainly does seem to match Solon's description of the capital city, has mountains to its north, and is definitely big enough at 40 kilometers in diameter. And while it may have been a satellite city built in likeness and in honor of the original capital, as the Atlantean Empire stretched as far east as Egypt, there are many problems with this theory. Atlantis is an oblong rectangular island bigger than Syria and Asia. The Rikat structure is on the giant continent of Africa. It is in the wrong place geographically. It is south of the Pillars of Heracles, not west. It is not lying at the bottom of the ocean, 
and it should have huge 30-story skyscraper temples made of silver, gold, and ivory in its center. Not a Motel 6 and Jiffy Lube station for camels. And we have further confirmation in Solon's writings that Poseidon divided the island continent into ten parts for his ten sons to share and rule over. The last of his sons, Isaias, clearly getting the mountainous northern region that survived the cataclysm, now called the Azores, still named after Isaias to this day. And finally, Solon tells us that Poseidon named his eldest of the ten sons Atlas, who was made king, and from him the whole island and the ocean it was in received his name, Atlantis and the Atlantic. The Rikat structure is in the Sahara's Adrar Plateau near Quadain, Mauritania, and bears no name or semblance to any of his children, let alone Atlas. Two other sons of extreme interest are Gediirus, where we get the Scandinavian Nordic name Gil or Goda, which means street or road, which we will discuss those countries being colonies of Atlantis later in this series. And also his son Mester, where we get the terms Master, Mister, Mester, and the Gaelic Meistid from, even before etymology dictionaries give credit. So besides the world's largest gold, silver, and ivory deposit, why has Atlantis been hidden from us? Because the entire control system matrix we are enslaved under today is solely built on one giant lie that stems from deleting the history of Atlantis. The rest of this series is going to uncover the true origins of religions, cultures, mythology, the Bible. Don't you blaspheme in here! Don't you blaspheme in here! Pyramids, language, hidden history, hidden geology, archaeology, the origins of races and racism, Hitler, Stalin, eugenics, Freemasonry, heliocentric fraud, the Jesuits, and lastly, we are going to propose that Atlantis did not sink 12,000 years ago but rather not even a thousand years ago, and that we may very well see it rise again in our lifetime or our children's. To quote Moses, Come at, Come me, at bro. me, bro. Shit's, Shit's about, about to get, to get real. real. Stay tuned for part three, the early 1800 and sink you laters. <laughs>